Hi, I'm Robert Battle, the Artistic Director of the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theatre. I'm delighted to introduce Sylvia Waters and her talk about working with Alvin Ailey over the years, and especially on Blues Suite, the work that was part of the first performance of the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theatre. After graduating from the Juilliard School and performing in Paris, Sylvia Waters began performing with the Ailey Company in 1968, and Alvin Ailey asked her to become the artistic director of Ailey II in 1974, and she did so for nearly four decades. She is the recipient of numerous honors, including a New York Dance and Performance Bessie Award and the prestigious Dance Magazine Award. Sylvia has been pivotal in the development of generations of artists at Ailey and the world of dance. And I'd like to just share a personal story. I remember when I got the phone call from Sylvia Waters inviting me to make an original work for Ailey II. This was in 1998 uh, and the work premiered in 1999. That was huge for me and she was so generous. Uh, I don't even know if she knew what that meant to me to get that phone call from the legendary Sylvia Waters. I made a work called Mood Indigo, no relation to uh, Duke Ellington's Mood Indigo. But she continued to be a mentor to me. Uh, Sylvia has a way of seeing talent, seeing potential that has made such a difference, not only for me, but for so many others. And she would also give me trinkets or artifacts that belong personally to Alvin Ailey. Uh, and so I have one of them right here because I keep them in this room, but this is one of them. I, I don't know exactly what it is, but what I do know is that it belonged to Alvin Ailey and he touched it and so did Sylvia. And now it is something that I own and I am so grateful to her because he has touched so many people and so has she. And so for me to have that connection, it sort of makes me feel a part of the legacy, not only in my role as the third artistic director, but in a personal way. And that really is who Sylvia Waters is. Incredible. And so I am so happy that you can join me in welcoming Sylvia Waters as she shares memories of her special history with Alvin Ailey. Thank you. I was uh, a student at Juilliard and uh, I was going to the YMHA to see performances because that's where everybody went to see performances, you know, to see and be seen and all of that. And I had seen Alvin and had taken what I realized was my first Horton class ever with him when I was 14. And uh, when I had no idea who he was. Uh, so down the road, uh, when I went to see this performance at the YMHA, and there was Blue Suite on the program and all of these incredible people. It was, I really had a, a visceral reaction to it because these people on the stage, it was as though they were people I knew. I was very familiar with these people, these characters, if you want. I was very familiar with blues music. And, you know, for all my going to my grandmother's in Virginia every summer, I, it was, these were like people I knew, only on stage they were larger than life. And these were people with, uh, with great energy and and uh, dignity, and it was very, very powerful. And I remember Mino Frisco. There were five men, and I'd, I'd just never seen dance like this. I didn't even, I'd never seen a Broadway show except once in my life. And so these were people who were not only dancing, but they were also people, they were characters on stage. And I was very impressed with that. Mind you, I never envisioned myself doing that. I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I was in school taking ballet, taking Graham, taking this and seeing all this modern dance and this deep stuff that I didn't understand. And 
seeing classical ballet that I didn't see myself, you know, I didn't see any likeness of myself there. But this was something else. This was something really, really uh, different and, and powerful and, and impressive. And that's how I remember my reaction. And I saw it, I think, twice in that same year, because he presented it twice. That um, March when it opened, and that was the premiere of his company as well. And then, as you know, it was a pickup company. It was whoever was available. He was doing um, Jamaica at the time. And so those dancers rehearsed for nothing uh, in the evenings after the show, on matinee days in between the show, and for months and months to put this performance together. And he shared that program with uh, another dancer who was in a different show, Ernest Parham. There was nobody on contract or anything like that. When you got paid, you got paid a carnation and a note, pretty much. I still have some old carnations and notes, actually, literally, for the museum, wow. yes. And so there were companies like, I mean, Tally, uh, I don't think he had done Phoebe Snow yet, but Alvin was the first I saw. John Butler was doing stuff. Um, uh, Robert Joffrey was doing stuff, but there was no, I mean, there were choreographers and you would use who you liked and who was available, really. And these dancers that Alvin used, they were, some of them were doing Jamaica with him or doing other shows if they could or doing whatever, you know, but he would pull them together. So you didn't always see the same dancers in each concert. And they had to like pull it all together again, you know, mm -hmm. with maybe a, a few new dancers. But there was the core of dancers that were very dedicated, uh, you know, like, um, Ella Thompson Moore and Thelma Hill and uh, Charles Moore and James Truitt finally and you know people like that and that's when they went on the 1962 Southeast Asia tour so that was a core of dancers that had what six weeks or three months of work provided by the State Department so that's how that worked. And these dancers worked with whoever was doing a concert. There was no contract. When I saw them again in 1965 in Tivoli, when I saw that company and when I saw Revelations, and I think Blue Sweet was also on the program, and I think the Anna Sokolow piece, Rooms, was on the program, because already he had a, a repertory company. I said, that's where I want to be. That's where I need to be. And that was the, also when I saw what I consider the crystallized version of Blue Sweet, as we know it today. You know, Alvin, he always worked on things until he got it right. And that was the Blue Sweet that I remember that is so reminiscent of what we do today is Blue Sweet. Uh, finally, uh, in 1968, I had been with the Maurice Bejar Company and I came back to New York after the Mexico Olympics because I couldn't go to Cuba with the company. And uh, I went to the Brooklyn Academy of Music to see a Martha Graham performance and ran into Alvin and Nick Chernovich, who was the great lighting designer. And Alvin said, what are you doing? I said, nothing. He said, great, I need a girl. And that's when it happened, you know? Uh, but Blue Sweet was one of the first pieces I learned. And I was the center girl on the stool with the fan. And then uh, he wanted me to do backwater blues with uh, Danny Strayhorn. Well, I was very intimidated by backwater blues because I had seen these, I was skinny mini, and I had seen these womanly figures and tall and leggy like Hope Clark, I mean, yeah, Hope Clark and Consuelo Atlas and, and even Michelle Murray and George Faison, you know. 
I mean, they were they were a tough act to follow, and I I was terrified. I said, "Oh no, I I just wouldn't be right." Here I am choosing, right? And Alvin said, "Oh really?" I said, "Really? I I just wouldn't be right for a blues suite." So he teased me about that for several weeks. It may have been months. And every time he saw George struggling in those lifts with Michelle, he'd sit behind me in rehearsal and say, and to think she doesn't want to do blues, sweet. To think she doesn't want to do backwater blues. And finally, the light bulb came on. I said, you know what? And I turned to Alvin and I said, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll really do it. I'll really try. He said, good, you should. And so I learned it. And I learned that I mean, here he was giving me a challenge. I needed to trust him that he thought I could do it. I needed to learn to inhabit that character, not as Sylvia, but as who the character was. Yeah, so I'm glad that light bulb came on when it did, you know? And, and I did, my partner was uh, Tubby Morton Winston, who was strong as an ox, and I just loved dancing with him. So there were certain challenges and certain things I learned. I mean, Blue Sweet, you know, was was a study in um, it was a study in in politics. It was a study in black culture. It was a study in culture. Period. I mean, Alvin would always say, "Who doesn't have the blues? Everybody knows the blues." The Japanese know the blues. The Hungarians know the blues. Everybody knows the blues. You know, when he took the company in uh, 1962 to all those places in Southeast Asia and Australia, they did Blue Suite. So I've always revered Blue Suite as one of Alvin's most timeless and political and poetical works. You know, one with uh, great urgency and so poignantly uh, choreographed. I mean, his blood memories were all in this. That was the first time I'd heard that expression. And, you know, for me, it still remains this powerful exploration of uh, Black love and pain and despair and joy and humor. You know, like the in the red section, they had the girl and the guy, you know, that are always chasing each other. That used to be two boys. That used to be Bill Luther and Dudley. And they were hysterical. They were wow. hysterical. They had worked out an act that was unbelievable. You know. Wow. You know, Blue Sweet addresses that universality that Alvin always talked about. I always felt very responsible for the integrity of the piece. And one time, somewhere on tour, I don't know if I had that review, but we even got a review with Second Company that compared us to the first company and said that they felt that this was really the, the version of blues that had the most integrity. As you know, blues is a piece hard to get, hard to keep hold of, because you're encouraged to go off in a direction, but you're encouraged to stay within the confines of what it is about. So it's very hard to pass on. Uh, and have people maintain that integrity. And so when I tried to teach it, I, first of all, when Alvin first suggested Second Company do the blues, he wanted to be able to get rid of the old costumes so he could get new costumes. So he thought the Second Company should do it and take those old costumes. Well, I was thrilled. And uh, I said, well, but will you come in and rehearse it? He said, oh, that's going to be so hard for me because I see all these ghosts. I see all these other people. I said, but these dancers really need to hear it from you. I will teach it, but I just ask you to please come in and rehearse it, which he did. 
he it was so wonderful to have him in the room so whatever nuance of changes he wanted to make he could make it and you know when he first wanted to do it on the second time i said well don't you think they were a little young for that he said well how old do you think i was when i choreographed i said yeah you got a point there <laughs> you got a point so he was really you know encouraging to get these ballets out there you know this was all during the time of civil rights this was all during the time of Vietnam. This was all during the time of all of those assassinations. You know, Kennedy, King, and, and Robert Kennedy, and Malcolm X. You know, how could that have been for a Black person? And, and a Black choreographer, a Black artist? You know, and so when I, I think of those times and how did we get through it? You know, but we did, and we got through it intact. And it's not because we ignored it and just kept dancing, but dance we did. Mercy, mercy on 